Yeah, yeah, yeah! Come and take a look at the snow. Bright white as far as your eyesight goes. Come and take a look at the fields of snow. I'll just get my coat, then we're good to go. Come and take a look at the lake. Let's have a quick skate before it gets late. Come and take a look at the frozen lake. Put your clothes on, mate. Don't make that mistake. Ba 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 ba. Greetings, holiday shoppers. There are now 64 shopping days left until Christmas. Time's getting short, y'all. Uh, but you know what that means. Uh, it's time for another episode of Christmas Creeps, your one-stop shop for holiday movies and TV shows all year round. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to go home for the horror day. <laughs> Hi, folks. My name is Joseph Wade. I'll be your host for this spooky evening. Here with me tonight are my co-hosts, Johnny Five, the human robot. Hello. Hello, John. What's going on with you? Uh, I had to watch this movie, and now I have to talk about it. So, I mean, that's my day. <laughs> eh, it is it is what it is. Uh, and Mr. Bradford is here as well. Brad, what's chicken? How many days did you say there's left until Christmas? 64. Nintendo 64! Oh my god, Brad. Thank you, Santa! <laughs> oh, I didn't see it coming. Uh, I legitimately didn't see it coming. Neither did Charles, apparently. Oh, poor Charles. Uh, oh. So, friends, it's <laughs> late October. We kind of missed uh, the, our, our first chance at a Halloween episode, because so, some, some of us had to go uh, be a dipshit down in Florida for a week, and whoops, that's my bad. Yeah, I wonder who the fuck that was. Yeah, I know. I don't know. It was Joseph. It was... It put the blame on me. Well, you know, there is always next week. There is another whole week before Halloween. So, uh, let's just dive right into it, folks. Uh, it's home for the horror days. This is our month where we talk about uh, Christmas horror movies, because believe it or not, there are actually quite a lot of them, and most of them so far have been very, very bad. And the... Trend is not going to stop anytime soon because this week on the show we're talking about part three in the Silent Night, Deadly Night saga, uh, subtitled Better Watch Out. Quick question for the pod. Is this better than the movie that's just called Better Watch Out? Yes. Which one was Better Watch Out again? The kids? Was that the kids? That was the uh, that was little psychopath who was playing like 12th dimensional chess and the movie really sucked. I I'm going to go I'm going to I'm going to disagree with John. I I I thought better watch out was better than this. Oof. Oof. No, I mean, you're wrong about a lot of things. This is just on another one to the list. Yeah, I know. They're both very bad. It's kind of follow-up question, John. Did you finish this one? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. A good baseline That's, that's, start that's from what I'm the saying. Back. I watched I I actually let it I let it finish playing, so it's by default better than better watch out which was so fucking terrible that i got mad at it and turned it off okay okay uh well so there's not a whole lot of uh preamble for this episode we just kind of had to dive into it i will say though uh, we didn't talk about this on our twitter feed but from last episode uh we did commit to donating 26 dollars. that 26 dollars um went to the second harvest food bank of northwest north carolina so uh, that's definitely a, a good cause worth checking out. We'll put a link to that in our show notes. Uh, so then that leaves us with uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3. Better Watch Out uh, came out about six six or seven years after uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Actually, I think just five years. 89. 89, yes. But it, uh, anyway, so this film is directed by Monty Hellman. Uh, who's probably most famous for directing a film called Two Lane Blacktop, which is a road trip movie starring Dennis Wilson from the Beach Boys and James Taylor. Uh, he apparently only agreed to direct this as a favor to a friend of his because he's not really uh, a horror guy at all. Uh, and it kind of shows in this film. Um, point being, Monty Hellman is kind of an odd choice for a uh, third sequ second sequel in a slasher franchise. I don't know why this was produced. I don't know why they chose him. I just know that the people who released the first two Silent Night, Deadly Nights on home video got the rights to the franchise and said, let's start pumping out sequels direct to video. So this is the first one that is direct to video. Uh, we watched it on Vudu, which is one of those weird streaming sites. I want to say Walmart owns it, but I'm not entirely yes. sure. They do? Really? Yes. Look, Walmart owns it because you can... You can... 
when you log in, it asks you if you have a Voodoo login or a Walmart login, and you can use it. Yeah. So, yeah, so thank you, Walmart, for letting us watch this film for free. <laughs> thank you, Sam Walton. A, 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 an ad for schizophrenia showing in the middle of our psycho horror movie, but okay. <laughs> oh, yes, I did get that one as well. I also got the the very upbeat uh, donut shop coffee ad, and that was put right in the middle of, like, there was a, one ad, and Joe got it the same way. The yeah, first no, it, ad in the movie it's a hard is... Cut. Yeah. It's a it's like mid scream. It goes straight to an ad, and then it's this peppy upbeat donut shop coffee, <laughs> yeah, uh, ad. It's like all right, okay. It's like remember when we were talking about um, I want to say it was Tokyo Godfathers, and it kept cutting to commercials of just like whatever local company bought ad space on that ser- at service. It's kind of <laughs> so like Ron, that only <laughs> Ron's vinyl siding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, hello, I'm your local representative from Cut Cut. Let me tell you about all of the, the knives and implements you could be purchasing today, <laughs> which actually mm. would be appropriate for this film. Yeah, I was about to say, that that's some, like, uh, synergy with a fucking yeah. slasher movie. Yeah, that's, like, that's some corporate synergy, like, that I can get into. Uh, so, Ricky Caldwell is back, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, he's not the same as he was in Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, um, but he's no he's no worse for wear. That's <laughs> yeah. Well, eh. I mean, remember how in Silent Night Deadly Part Two he got shot in the heart a bunch? Yeah, now his head is missing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby, I heard that one loud and clear. Crack over the top of Ricky's head. I can't with this movie. <laughs> R.I.P. Ricky's head. Pour uh, one out. Pour one out boy. for Ricky's brain. Um, so. He's comatose, and then we have Laura, who's a blind, telepathic young lady. Mm-hmm. And the question I want to ask, is the subtitle Better Watch Out intentional because of the fact that Laura is blind? This movie was literally written in a week. They did not think that far ahead. Yeah, I yeah, I did read that little tidbit. Um, that so it's nugget. just a, so it's just a sick joke. Then better watch yeah. out. Well, I mean, this whole movie is just one big sick joke, really. The bad That's thing it. about the maybe the worst thing, the least believable thing about this movie, other than all the psychic stuff, is that Laura seems to have like a sixth sense as to when she should scream as a blind person, like when. Ricky, I keep wanting to call him Billy. Ricky shows up in the window. She pretty much screams immediately, even though she's blind. Well, so or she immediately knows it's her grandmother's corpse hanging in the basement, which is odd. The movie kind of forgets the psychic thing about halfway through, and also kind of forgets For the blind the thing, blind thing. To, in, yes. in certain c- circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Laura is a patient of a doctor it's richard bayman from west side story or twin peaks whichever you care yeah, about there most. are way too many of like david lynch's stable in this fucking movie for some reason as in there are there are three exactly yes, three. That's, that's, way, that's way too many why are <laughs> well, why are any of them here okay well here's the thing like i actually that occurred to me and i went and looked it up this went into production the exact same time as twin peaks like the same month even so it makes me wonder why Richard Bayman even was was available in the first place because he should have been busy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't this know. this movie was written in March and and like premiered in July of the same yeah. year. Like they, they had a hard goal of having this out on the home video for the Christmas season, and they were done with it by the summer. <laughs> they sure did. They Here's sure the sentence did. from Wikipedia: By the end of April, principal photography was done, editing was done in May, with Hellman taking time out to go to con. And by July 1989, there was an answer for it screamed at a film festival. Yeah, I found a, I found a video interview where he said they actually they screen they like had its world premiere at the Barcelona Film Festival. Huh. I mean, I'm not much for like the festival circuit, but I can you just imagine going to like an international film festival and seeing and sitting down into a dark theater with all these like famous people and film critics and everybody, and then the lights go down and then this starts playing. How is your weekend? <laughs> It's it's very disappointing coming off of both part one and part two, which knew that they were shit horror movies and decided to have fun with it, especially two. Yeah, there's not a lot of fun in this movie. This one even like does the same thing that two does of recycling footage from the first movie for absolutely no reason. 
Mm-hmm. Because, okay, so Laura is, she's blind, but she is also a psychic. And Dr. Westside's story is trained to conduct an experiment with her to see if she can use her psychic abilities to reach into Ricky's brain and pull out his memories. I think that's what I, what he's doing. Not just Ricky in specifically, but in general, the idea is to see if psychic people can help coma patients, basically. Right, and Ricky's like the comatose test subject. Yes. So, who, dis- yeah. despite being shot in the fucking chest a bunch in the last movie, he looks like he had a stroke, kind of. Like, one side of his face is kind of messed up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the entire top of his head is missing, placed, replaced with a clear plastic dome with, like, a blinking light on it. And then you see his his brain floating in some, like, brain fluid. <laughs> and and if I'm being honest, Ricky's brain is the star of the movie. I don't care about anything <laughs> else. <laughs> As it sloshes around or what have you? As it sloshes around in, like, a proto-Futurama, he- like, case, yes. <laughs> I oh. kind of like, I kind of loved it. Like, it's one of those, like, cheap special effects that shouldn't look as good as it does, but it just kind of works. Uh, I don't know. I could, I could stare at that prop for days. Like, I hope that prop got saved. <laughs> Well, it's... it can be yours for only eight hundred and ninety nine dollars. Wait, really? No, I'm kidding. Man, it just see made now that you, up. You, I'm... See, now you have. Now I have to go on eBay and I have to look up Silent Night, Deadly Night Three brain case. So, oh. Ricky gets he he make Laura makes contact with him, and I guess that's enough to to set him alight. I I suppose you could say. And a Santa is coming. It is Christmas Eve, by the way, because of course it is. Because <laughs> of course it um, is. <laughs> because of course it is. And a Santa is visiting around the hospital. And he's your prototypical drunk Santa. And he goes into Ricky's room and starts drinking alcohol. Which, as we all know by this point in the franchise, that Red and Santa are are offsets for, for Ricky. Ricky is basically a bull. Like, yes. Yes, <laughs> exactly what Karen said last year. She because she, she mentioned when we were watching it that yeah, she said the exact same thing last year. And I, uh, something to point out was um, remember so in Laura's dream there was a Santa that showed up yes. that turned into oh, Ricky. Yeah. yeah, that is not that was originally going to be the same Santa that Ricky kills, but Monty Hellman decided it was too mean spirited, so he refilmed the scene himself as the drunk Santa and made a bunch of horrible jokes <laughs> to make you feel less sympathetic for the Santa that gets got. I mean, that's a pretty good impulse, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. He's not wrong there. But also, like, Ricky, like any other, like, slasher villain, Ricky kind of awakens in the presence of bad behavior, because that drunk Santa definitely should not be there. Yeah. You could say he's a bad Santa. Aw, uh, yeah, you could. You certainly could. And then as Ricky is escaping the hospital, he also kills Poinsettia... <laughs> Uh, receptionist. receptionist lady she has a poinsettia pin and that's enough that's enough and yeah, there are, which... there are, apparently exists like a, a director's cut where like that that kill is a lot gorier but uh i i saw that the, the clip was on youtube i did not want to watch it because i don't needed that in my life yeah there's there's a a scene where laura is interacting with her and sort of predicts her future demise and it's pretty gruesome and they don't do that with they don't play with that in the entire rest of the film that she is also like has some kind of precognition. Yeah, like I said, they forget that she's psychic. There's yeah, a basically. lot of wasted potential in this film. Like you could do some really cool and fun things with it, but then again, again, written in a week, produced in a couple months. So yeah, whatever. and uh, honestly, like the the fact that this movie looks as good as it does and it, it kind of. It pretends to be a real movie better than the first two did, so I can't fault them for that. But like, yeah, this is just a lot of wasted like plot potential is is what I'll say. I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's this movie is ninety minutes long, but it feels like it's just all filler. All filler, no killer. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of like cuts back to the detective and the and the psychiatrist driving around and shit we, like that. We yeah, and this movie takes this movie is a merciful 90 minutes and the first hour of it is basically you get a couple of small time small time slashes but really like nothing it's all set up nothing happens for the first 
hour okay. and ten minutes of this film. So let's try and, and and streamline this plot. So basically, Laura and her brother Chris and his girlfriend Jerry. If that, if, am I? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> the three of them are going to uh, Laura and Chris's grandma's house for Christmas Eve dinner. Ricky has that psychic connection with Laura, and he can hear her giving Jerry directions. So he knows where Laura is, and he tries to he escapes and goes there too. Meanwhile, Doctor West Side Story and and Lieutenant Robert Culp, for some reason, are also on the case, and they are hot on their heels of all of these people to get to the house before Ricky does something terrible. Spoiler alert: They don't make it. Ricky does everything terrible. Yeah, Ricky somehow beats even Laura, Chris, and Jerry there. Yeah, there is. Mm, yeah, there is a solid twenty minutes of this film that is just. Dr. Psychic and Lieutenant Cop Carphone Man just talking in the car, and it's the worst, and I hate it. <laughs> like, if this were a, re- a real movie, and that's, that scene had been just, like, two characters talking about the nature of, of, like, evil or something, I could be down with that. But this is a shitty directed video slasher movie. I just want to see some sweet kills. Just stop talking. And they're yeah. not even they're not even waxing philosophical most of the time. They're talking about like car phones and oh, it's just bad. It's real like, bad. Th- like there's a scene where they're talking about uh, deja vu, and th- and the cop says, "You know what they call it when you get deja vu twice?" And the doctor actually gives him like a legitimate response, like recurring such and such phenomenon. And the cop's like, "No, they call you stupid." <laughs> there there like is there are a couple of like weird it's like uh, like just out of nowhere jokes like that because when when her brother picks her up it uh, laura makes some joke about what what is the, the joke about how how does an idiot get his belt off and then she just <laughs> starts like jerking off the like the little pin on her belt oh yeah <laughs> yeah why <laughs> there's some real weird phrasing in this film too in the script like there is the phrase the world's champion blind orphan <laughs> that is a that is a literal phrase in the first 10 minutes oh of yeah the movie, dead, that dead mom by the way yeah, oh yeah, we have a dead mom alert. Oh, it hit the dead mom alarm. Damn. Um, like, like it's it, you kind of can't escape it with these movies, right? Like it, yeah. the whole the whole thing is predicated on a dead mom. <laughs> yeah. Ruining Ricky's life. But then Ricky, I mean, I don't know where to start with Ricky cuz he's basically like kind of a grunting uh voiceless killer. But he's also played by like a pretty well known, you know, horror actor. He's Bill Mosley. He's played by it's Otis B. Driftwood. Yeah. Yeah. He was in Texas Chainsaw too, but I can't remember his name. Um Chop Top Sawyer, it says. Chop Top Sawyer, yeah. Like that movie is fucking crazy. And then he's in this movie playing kind of the exact opposite character, like just monotone, mute, nothing. He's just a face like, yeah. with a brain jar in his head. In, in like in movie, the only line he ever says is Laura, right? Yeah. Until the very, very end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, what a strange choice at the end of the movie, too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there in a moment. But, I mean, like, so what is there in this movie worth talking about, even? Because it's kind of the first act where you kind of find out, like, oh, there's a blind girl and she's a psychic. And then there's a brain in a jar on the top of a guy's head. And then the last act where there are just some, not even any, like, quote, unquote, sweet kills. It's just kills. He yeah. kills people I, with I a must, knife. Yeah, I must mention, I, I know we were all desensitized at this point, but there's nothing particularly, like, gruesome. Like, the gas station attendant is about it. Like, that's, it's nothing to the level of, like, the first one where I had to, like, look away where, you know, Billy is impaling somebody on a friggin' antler rack or something like that. Or, yeah, like, no, he's, he's not, like, shoving an umbrella into somebody and then, like, opening the umbrella up. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're not also, trying to get fancy with the kills. Yeah, also, t- uh, two of the, the kills are even off-screen and a fairly low body count of seven for this film. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, let's let's just go through that real quick. He, what, he stabs the Santa off-screen... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, mm-hmm. no, no, that's another off screen. Then that's he's, that's he's three he's, off screens then. Yeah, he stabs the he cuts the nurse's throat, but we see we see the aftermath, but we don't see him do it. Oh, right. I guess almost all of them are. Yeah, he kills the, the, the guy who picks him up hitchhiking off screen and we see the body. He kill he cuts the, oh, the gas station attendant's head off him. and we see the severed head, but we don't see the body. But so that, that's eight. Okay. 
So hang so hang on though. The the guy that he the guy that hit, picks him up as he's hitchhiking offers him an ugly red Christmas sweater because his wife made him wear one and he doesn't want it. So activating the red thing and he just fucking kills the guy and steals his car. How much eh. better of a goof would it be if he wore the sweater for the rest of the film? I was no. ready for that. I was expecting him I to was... wear the damn sweater. <laughs> I was hoping for that as well, but he, he we almost get rewarded by the stupid beanie that he puts on to come into Grandma's house. <laughs> yes. yes, it's like half half covering up his dome, but not really. Yeah, because like the, the the lid is still visible <laughs> under the bottom of the beanie. <laughs> yeah, which it's so, established that the, the grandma is psychic too, but she's still somehow just like, oh, this isn't obviously a psychopathic killer. It's just a it's just a random vagrant who I seem to know because I have a Christmas present for him. Which is all yeah. wrapped up in nice shiny red paper. Oh, there we have it again. So this is this is not unlike a Greek tra- tragedy where all major actions happen off stage, <laughs> and we're just treated to the aftermath. Pretty much. Um, yeah. So let's then, go okay. through the rest of this. Yeah, all we right. had the hitchhiker, the gas station. Then next in order, I guess, would be Jerry. Gra- no, Grandma. Well, Grandma. okay. I'm talking about the order in which they're revealed, but yeah, I guess it would be Grandma, and then Mr. Psychman, and Jerry, and then either Chris or Ricky. It's kind of Schrodinger's kill. No, it's not. They try to make it look like that, but they it's fucking not. Oh, okay. Who was it? Chris, maybe it's be- okay. Maybe it's because I turned the brightness up on my TV last night playing a fucking game and forgot to turn it down. I yes. was playing um, Horizon Chase Turbo and getting mad at the Halloween track, so I turned the volume up, uh, the brightness up, so I could see like, the fucking track. It's like I'm fuck fuck you games for like just doing shit in the dark to like hide I, shit, make it more difficult. I, I used to do that. In Donkey Kong Country, there's the one stage where the lights would turn off, but it was yes. still like visible, and I'd just turn up the brightness on my screen and cheese my way through the entire thing and not even bother with the light bulbs. Fuck you, game. I paid three ninety nine to rent you. Yeah. Fucking Donkey Kong. Um but anyway, it's very clearly Ricky on the stretcher when they take him out and say we can still save him. Okay, so Chris is dead. Uh, yeah, because you can you can see the uh, the I, I think the idea is that they're trying to hide it, but you can totally see that it, you can see by the both the shoes and the giant giant fucking brain dome. You can see that it's Ricky on the stretcher. Mm. Okay, that it, yeah, and that is very much a just in case we get to make another one kind of deal. Mm. Yes, which apparently they didn't even make good on because when they made another one, they just said fuck Ricky Caldwell completely. <laughs> But also, I, I do want to point out that when Ricky kills his doctor, he—I mean, it's just a kind of—it's just a very, you know, uh, I don't—I don't know what the word is. It's—it's it's just a very simple, like he stabs him in the gut kind of thing. But then when we see him later, when the cop finds him later, his guts are like coming out of his stomach. It's like stomach. Bishop and aliens. Yeah, yeah. So the aftermath is so much worse than the actual kill scene. <laughs> But they made sure to give uh, Richard Bamer a dramatic death because, like, we, they the camera holds on him like doing his death girls for like three fucking minutes. <laughs> I don't know why. Mm. Whatever. But yeah. So uh, even even among the previous two movies, the the kill count is very low. Like the character count is low. There's hardly anybody in this movie. Maybe five characters with speaking lines. I guess. Let's see. Not counting Ricky. Psych, psych cop. Grandma. Jerry, Chris, Laura, Santa, receptionist, gas station attendant, person gas station attendant is having phone sex with, uh, guy in the hitchhiker guy. I think that's that's what twelve. That's it. I think yeah, that's uh, it. I I'm looking at a cast list. There are eighteen credited characters, um, okay. and there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are eight credited in archive footage from previous movies. So uh, <laughs> there are <laughs> there are only just about twice as many actors in this movie as there were in like recycled footage. And that was all that <laughs> the only recycled well the main recycled footage was like all the kids at the orphanage, yeah. Yeah. Well, no no the main like the main recycled footage was from the like inciting incident in the first movie, the actual like killer Santa who kills Ricky's parents. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then because, the, because, because they're just scene, the, yeah. because they're just like, well Samantha Scully won't get naked. How can we get a second set of tits in this movie? Oh yeah, let's do the archive footage again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> let's go to the archives. But they cut away pretty they 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 cut away like a lot quicker than they did in the original film. Yeah, I, I just imagine like in 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 universe like Laura's looking at those uh, those memories and going like, oh, I don't need to see that. Laura's looking at those memories. Ah, uh, 
Thank you. Nicely done, Brad. Um, but then, yeah, the other like flashback scene we get is when the Santa shows up at the orphanage and the cop shoots him in the back thinking it's uh, Billy. Right in front of Ricky. Yeah. So we we get the I guess the scene where Ricky is initially like really traumatized, and the one that kind of kicked off the whole thing. So this one makes better use of the flashbacks than the first than than the second film did. But you know, guys, I think we're all kind of coming around to the idea that this is not as good a movie as the second one, and I think I know why. And the second movie was half the first movie. <laughs> yeah, half of the yeah exactly. But the reason because it doesn't have garbage day. Because it doesn't have garbage day, like, yes. uh, the second movie went out of its way to be goofy, where this one is just kind of depressing and boring, kind of bland. Yep. If I'm being honest. I mean, it's it's kind of like the it's kind of like the RoboCop remake or whatever. It's like y'all realize this was originally like a joke movie, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this is. Do you know what we're doing here, or do you think you're actually making making art here? <laughs> But like we they, we don't even get Eric Freeman back as Ricky, you know they they ha- they ha- cast somebody else and his performance as Ricky like is the whole reason anybody nowadays cares about these movies at all. Yes. So why not bring him back? I really don't know. I don't know what the reason behind that was. Let's see what else Ricky or Eric Freeman was doing in 1989. Let's see. In 1989, he was in. He was credited as drug dealer henchman with shotgun and young rebels. So yeah, he was really <laughs> fucking busy. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh yeah. So guys, we've talked about this last year, but we didn't ever really followed up with it. Uh, so since. Between our episode on Silent Night 2 and this episode now, they released Silent Night 2 on Blu-ray with a special feature of Eric Freeman playing Ricky Caldwell in an in-character interview uh, about <laughs> okay. his his experiences since that movie. I'm going to drop that into the field here. I don't know if we want to just watch it later or what, but uh, there it is. They they got him back. He's looking better with the hair than without it, I'll say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eric Friedman is Ricky today. So, not a good movie. <laughs> not a good movie. Really not. Like, I was kind of impressed early on when I realized that this movie was actually made by people who know how to make movies, but not necessarily write yeah, them. It's, it looks yeah, good. It's, it's like, I want to I wanna say competently, that's adequately put together. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, it's not a, it's not a, jumbled fucking mess like some movies of this caliber would be mm-hmm. yeah it's it's just it's it's cardinal sin is that it was direct slapped together for a direct video market in a week and it shows uh laura is not a very good leading lady i must say as well i i really think she was kind of hamstrung by having to play blind really yeah, well yeah uh, she, but she did, even she her did a pretty good was... job of like being like for the most part believably a blind character as well yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's not really what I'm I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. more. I don't know if it's supposed to be her personality that has like this deadpan delivery of stuff. Yeah, but... she's she's fucking Daria is another part of the problem. Yeah, I that's see what more you're saying. The main thing. Yeah, yeah, I get that definitely. Like she is just not a fun protagonist to follow around. You kind of don't want to see her win. At the end of the day, uh, I wouldn't. But, I, I mean, wouldn't go that far. I'm more just bland. You know, just really disinterested. <laughs> I don't know. Dis, dis, honestly, disinterest is is where we're all landing here, and that's kind of the worst thing a movie can do to you is make you just disinterested. Um, I mean, apparently, the next two films in the series go kind of off the rails, and I'm ready for that. But I'm also yeah, I mean, yeah. Ricky's in the next couple ones just because he has to be. But like the next one is about like a weird like feminist cult slash bug worshipping people thing and also clint howard is ricky now because why the hell not Hmm. but also i was reading up on that those two and they're produced by the same people and their guiding principle in silent night 4 was basically we don't want anything to do with the christmas gimmick so we're just gonna not deal with it and then in five they said we fucked up let's bring back christmas so four is Uh, i (sighs) I don't know. I have, I have a question for them. If you're not going to have a Christmas gimmick, why are you calling your movie Silent Night, Deadly Night 4? 
name recognition because yeah, it sells no. videotapes. That's really all it is. Ugh. I, I don't Ugh. know. And then there, then you get the remake, which I don't think we're ever going to get to because no one needs that. I'm going to read a single sentence from the Wikipedia summary of Silent Night, Deadly Night 4 Initiation. They perform a ritual on Kim. Ricky and Fema slice open a live rat over her and insert a giant larva into Kim's vagina. Uh, so that's what this never movie need, does. N- never need to see that in my entire life. Thank I'm you, sure Clint ho- Howard. Hopefully it's off screen, but still, come on. Fucking Reggie Bannister is in this movie? What the hell? Go go on. <laughs> Reggie. Okay, we might, have, we might have to watch Silent Night 4 after all. Reggie Bannister is in it. No, no, I was waiting for my opportunity to say go on after you gave me that horrifying uh, plot synopsis there. Is one of I the characters know named more. FEMA? Yes. Mod Adams plays <laughs> a character named FEMA. Huh. Oh, jeez. All right, well, uh. so Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, better watch out. It's kind of a bad time, and none of us enjoyed it. You, more uh, like you better not watch it. Uh, I mean, all, I mean, all of like the 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 slasher and everything is just kind of really underwhelming. Like the kills are all just very oh, they got stabbed with a knife. The ending fight, like this, this definitely came up before Silence of the Lambs, correct? Yeah, yeah, I did. If it if it hadn't, I would have said like the ending fight is just like oh, someone watched Silence of the Lambs and then wrote a movie. Instead, so- someone on Silence of the Lambs watched Silent Night Deadly Night Three, <laughs> and that's and that's worse. Because at one point, at at one point, the the blind girl, she like knocks, she goes down to the basement, she knocks the the light bulb out, and so that it's it's quote unquote dark, even though there's still plenty of light for us to see what's going on. It's it's movie dark. It's movie dark, and then she goes, "All right, now 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 we're even. Like she's blind and he can't see, but uh, that's bullshit, and we all know it." (laughs) <laughs> Maybe she, which it would, I would have I would have given the movie so much credit if it would have had him pull out a flashlight right then. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> like even like if he had killed the cop and taken his flashlight and pistol. Oh man! Uh. But alas, like see, we could probably put together a pretty good Silent Night Deadly Night, but no one's asking us to. Lord I mean, willing, I'm free next. I'm free next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Um, also, I want I do want to point out my other favorite horrible line from this movie the drunk santa says to to a comatose ricky hey vegetable who's your favorite singer perry coma Uh, (laughs) oh it's it's bad also there's the weird like chris comes back with the shotgun and he says is it live or is it memory like that's supposed to be his catchphrase like that's supposed to be the pithy comment I don't yeah, get that it. was that was like a like, Memorex ad copy from the late nineties, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, it was. That, that, yeah, was yeah, the, yeah. that was the slogan for like Memorex like blank cassette tapes. God yeah, or floppy it. disks or whatever. But like why? What what a strange decision. Was it an ad lib, but that's all he could come up with? And also, like, I don't know what what kind of a look this guy is going for with like the long curly blonde hair and the denim jacket and the blue jeans. Like he's he he's looks... going he's going for Billy from Stranger Things. That's his yeah. Look. That's that was exactly what I was gonna say. He looks almost exactly like Billy from Stranger Things. I mean, I guess, but then like he's got that that face that makes me think he looks more like one of uh, the one of the the weird buddies in Wayne's World. Like he looks more like one of the guys in the back seat. Yes, I was the, thinking that too. He, he looks world. like just one of the random friends from Wayne's World. And yes. that's when I when I started trying to look up who he was, I was like, okay, this is just one of the other dudes from Wayne's World, isn't it? And I looked up Eric Duray, and I was like, oh no, it's fucking Leo. Yeah, it's that fucking guy. <laughs> this fucking movie, man. Why? Why anything? Why anything? <laughs> Well, that's like that's as good as I as good as I can put it, y'all. Like this movie just kind of murdered me. I'm dead now. Uh. <sighs> so I think that's gonna have to be where we stop with this crazy train. And now it's time to move into the crankometer, where we rate these movies oh, no. on an X and Y axis. The X axis is our scale for Christmasity, how Christmassy a film is, and the Y axis is how good a film is. So, gentlemen. How Christmassy is Silent Night, Deadly Night Three? Better watch out. Eh. That that's my answer. Eh. I mean, um, it's a still one. A, I mean, no, eh, 
two or three, I would say. It's still it's still playing around with Christmas shit. It still blatantly takes place at Christmas. If you had this movie not at Christmas, it would be really fucking weird. That, that yeah. might be that might be a a directorial choice to <laughs> some of Santa slasher not at Christmas. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> you know that would be kind of interesting. I'm not gonna lie. See, let's that um... would that's should have been the direction they went with Silent Night Deadly Night Four. Really, if they're not gonna have it at Christmas, then just play up the Santa part. Yeah, just have Ricky come know. back. They're just like, oh, it's July. He'll be fine. But then Christmas <laughs> in July happens. Yes. Yeah, they just just play which up I, how which, weird and terrible it is to have Santa Claus killing people in June. Which I'm I'm of the opinion that people that do Christmas in July should probably be murdered by a psychopathic Santa <laughs> with an exposed brain. But eh, whatever. I mean, uh... okay. So here's how it is. Uh, our the first Silent Night Deadly Night we gave a three for Christmasity. The second one we gave a one. So this one, ah, I mean it's it's more Christmassy than two, but then just barely. Two, so a, t- so two? a two, then. I mean, yeah, it's pretty solid two, huh? And then, uh, how good is this movie, gentlemen? Um, what did we give one and two? We gave one a negative three, and yes. we gave two a positive two. Okay, I I would be tempted to give this one a zero. It's it's competently put together, but it doesn't really add up to anything that I really want to. And not, I don't mean this in a bad way when I say I don't want to go back to it necessarily. Like it's not like oh that's traumatic, traumatizing or whatever. It's just like I don't, I don't need to watch that again. It's, there's, I'm not going to get anything more out of it that I didn't get the first time. It, yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. It's ultimately forgettable, and there are certain parts of Silent Night Deadly Night One that I will probably never forget for reasons that I don't want to get into. Like I don't know, I don't know, man. You know, I I do enjoy seeing. Santa, you know, take the head off a snowman with an axe. That's pretty good. It's pretty. It was good. good. All the weird, like psychosexual stuff, is weird. And then you have like the the horns kill. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. And then in two, I mean, like, how just how can you top Garbage Day? Really? I mean, that's true. I'd give this like a negative two, maybe. I know that's higher than. Silent Night, Deadly Night one, but that's that's just my gut feeling. I mean, so I John wants maybe John a negative wants his... one. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm kind of. I, kinda... I, I think. I think one of the reasons we went lower on Silent Night, Night one was just how mean spirited it was at points. It it really very mean spirited. And this yeah, one, I mean this it's this one is more just like boring. Yeah, it's it's a very um. It's like, not it's not spirited is the thing. Like by the. Like by the numbers, kind of horror movies. Like, yeah, you got a couple of kills. They're very, they're very middle of the road. Mm-hmm. You have yes. like a little bit of nudity. It's very, it's very perfunctory. Basically, it's just like, oh, it's it's an R-rated movie. We have someone who'll get naked. Let's do it. I yeah, mean, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really, formulaic, formulaic, and and kind of blasé and boring. I'm gonna say, let's give this a negative one. Yeah, because yes. it's it's not. Honestly, not terrible, but just the things about it that bring it down are just the fact that, like, well, for starters, it was a horror movie made by someone who doesn't make horror movies, and that really kind of shows. <laughs> like, they don't know how to make it exciting and interesting. It's just okay. A blind girl has a fight with a guy whose brain is in a jar on top of his head. Yeah, they're, it's kind of the caliber of kills, like in terms of like how much focus and everything is on them that you'd expect out of like a cop movie, like a Dirty Harry or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's 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 like a shitty Christmas themed episode of any like cop drama really, with, except with a blind psychic girl and a guy with a brain in a jar on his top of his head. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 just let's call it. What did we say? Two negative one. Yes. So you heard it here first, folks. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Three. Better watch out. We score it on our crankometer at two negative one. So book them, Booker. <laughs> and <laughs> let's move on, shall we? So, uh, gentlemen, uh, I don't know if we're going to get another uh, Halloween episode this month uh, because we got Clark's Giving coming right around the corner, y'all. So get ready for that. I mean, y'all ready for this? I mean, part one of Clark's Giving and. Home for the Horror Days are basically the same thing, though, so. <laughs> true. I mean, yeah, true, true. So we can kind of extend Home for the Horror Days into November, because why not? We've done we that kinda, before. We've done it before. We kind of missed a week, so you know what? That's our gift to you. Ho- Halloween can can live on for at least another week. 
Held over. Halloween is held over. Oh, boy. So, uh, yeah, fuck you, Christmas. We're doing extra Halloween this year. Yeah, for real. For real. But but just pretend that it's spelled held over, like H-E-L-L, because it's Halloween. Get it? Okay, cool. Glad we're all on the same page here. Brad and then it's o apostrophe v e r. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> held, held over. H e l l e d o o v e r. Yes. <laughs> Why? Because we. we Why never, not? We never met a stupid gimmick we didn't run with immediately. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> I'm into it. Uh, but Brad, uh, this is going to be our last episode with you for a little while. I know it's. I- it sucks it's and I hate it. Yeah, not not gonna... the, not the reason that you're leaving. It's just the, that you're you're going to be gone, and I'm, I already miss you. Yes, um, I would appreciate if you keep one thing in mind. Yes, all of the most worst, boring, boringest, baddest movies. Go ahead and watch them while I'm gone, okay? Please <laughs> save it's... the good ones for when I'm around. Uh, we'll think of something good. We'll, we'll find some real trash. Um, but yeah, so just, just real stinkers, please. Like just real stinker Roonies. Just the worst garbage imaginable, please. Uh, we already said we're going to watch Elf. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, y'all. So this movie we we just watched, it's, all, it's streaming for free on Vudu, along with a whole buttload of other shitty Christmas horror movies. Yeah, all of the rest of the Silent Night, Deadly Night movies, a movie called Silent Night, Dead Night, a movie called Silent Night, Bloody Night. Yeah. So uh, I'm you, not if, endorsing it. You should watch those. At all. I'm just saying that those are things that exist. Yeah, those are there. And if you are desperate for free entertainment, that's where you got to go. I mean, you could also load up Voodoo and just watch fucking Con Air instead. I do that. Don't watch this. Watch Con Air. <laughs> Con Air. Yeah. Why not? Um, but if you really absolutely do need uh, your a Christmas horror fix, I did make a letterboxed list of Christmas horror movies for your viewing pleasure. And I'll put that in the show notes. And I will say that uh, the other the other night I did watch the 2019 Child's Play, and somebody lied to me because it has nothing to do with Christmas at all. Was it a birthday present then, or something? It, yeah, it was just it was a birthday present. There is one kill in that movie that involves Christmas lights, but it's like a dad's pulling Christmas lights down after you know being up for several months. Uh, oh. So yeah, there's Shame that. that. All right. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah so that's that's silent night deadly night three for this week everybody (laughs) like we're gonna be talking about it again next time (laughs) i don't know how to end the show and we just we just wasted 45 minutes of your lives um yeah so if you have any questions or comments you can get those to us at uh christmas creeps on twitter or email them to us at uh xmas creeps at gmail.com Go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts. I'm going to have to get that straight in my head now because they just changed it. Remember that time we watched a movie where Steve Martin played a talking dog? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I sure do. Uh, 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 Those those were better days. Um, So, yeah. Simpler times. (laughs) Go to uh, Apple Podcasts and leave us a star rating and review and uh, and, uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, tell your friends to like, comment, and subscribe, and to smash whatever button happens to be on whatever website they're looking at. <laughs> smash any button. Smash all the buttons on whatever screen you're currently looking at right smash now. Smash the punish button to make Ricky stab a Santa. <laughs> <laughs> but we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on YouTube. We're on uh, Google Play. I We're on Stitcher. We are not on Spotify. Someone asked me about that recently, and I don't know if Spotify wants us or not, but I'll try. I'll see what I can do. Um, but uh, yeah, so we will see you guys in November for part two of Home for the Horror Days slash Clark's Giving when we'll be talking about the original 1974 Black Christmas. Um, but until then, folks, uh, I've been Joseph Wade. I'm Johnny Five, the human robot. And I'm Bradford, and I'll see you chumps in the new... Oh, right! And a happy new year. <laughs> Happy Christmas. 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 Happy